Hello and welcome to the Striker Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. This is Charlotte Jones. I'm a homeschool coach and homeschooling mom of twin boys. I know it can feel really overwhelming to keep all the balls in the air all the time. So each week I chat about tips and strategies for being a happy and thriving working homeschool mom that you can implement in your life too. I also speak to awesome and inspiring women who manage to juggle homeschooling and work successfully and find out what their secrets are. Be sure to check out my time audit and mindset challenge in the show notes and sign up to my newsletter for lots of cool freebies. And if you ever need to chat, please book in a session with me. I'm so excited for you to be here and I hope you'll get so much value out of this episode. So let's get started. I'm so excited that one of my favorite podcasting tools, Zencaster, is sponsoring this episode. Podcasting is a fantastic way to get yourself and your story out there, but it can be super overwhelming to get started. Zencaster's all-in-one web-based solution makes podcasting super simple. And if you know me, you know I'm obsessed with simplicity. Zencaster provides crystal clear sound and gorgeous HD video while being really easy to use. I love the fact that my guests just have to click a link and we're ready to record. Zencaster is all about making your podcasting experience easy. And with everything from local recording to automatic post-production tools, you don't have to leave your browser to get the episode done. And with their cloud backup, you'll never lose an episode. If you want to share your story, then I highly recommend using Zencaster because it's awesome. If you go to zen.ai forward slash strike a balance and enter promo code strike a balance, you'll get 30% off your first three months. That's zen.ai forward slash s t r i k e a b a l a n c e. I'm so excited to listen to your new podcast and to hear your story. Hello, my lovely fellow working homeschool moms. I hope everybody's doing really, really well. Today's episode, I basically researched for myself, but I hope if you struggle like I do, then it will give you some tips and strategies for sleeping better. So that's basically what this episode is about. It's why sleep is important and how we can sleep better and more. So I think we all know that sleep is important for self-care. I mean, this is not going to be a revolutionary episode, but I hope it will remind you that sleep is the self-care secret weapon for moms who are juggling work and homeschool. And to give you some tips on how to get more of the most delicious activity in the world. So why is sleep so important? Lots of stuff happens in your body and brain when you sleep. So according to a post by the American Sleep Association, your body repairs itself, synthesizes proteins, and releases growth hormones. At the same time, your brain isn't being idle. There's a lot of activity in there as well, like reorganizing and processing memories and events and consolidating new information. So what does a lack of sleep actually mean for us? Well, it can have a lot of negative effects on our lives. Some include slowed down reaction time, reduced immune response to infection, a possible increase in depression, and even increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Okay, right. So we need more snooze time. That's obvious. But how can we get it? So I want to share some tips um, to get more sleep. And I asked my audience over the last few days about how they sleep. And it's been a topic that's really made a lot of people comment and share. So I think I'm not alone in being somebody who struggles with sleep. And those who do sleep well are very willing to share what they know and how they do it because they know the importance of sleeping well. So let me share a little bit of what they said. And hopefully some of these ideas could help you to sleep better. Somebody spoke about using magnesium and melatonin as a supplement. And I did find an article on the National Library of Medicine, which speaks about a study that was conducted on 60 people who suffered from insomnia, and they were given a combination of magnesium, melatonin, and B vitamins over a period of three months. And the patients reported a decrease in insomnia during the three-month period. Obviously, this is by no means medical advice. Please, please, please consult your doctor before taking any supplements or medication. Something else that I know from personal experience is avoiding alcohol and caffeine before bed. I cannot sleep if I've had a drink uh, before going to bed, or I don't sleep well anyway. Matt Walker, who has a number of TED Talks about sleep, 
says that caffeine actually lasts much longer than you might think. And this I found really surprising. He says that you can still feel the effect 12 hours after drinking a cup of coffee. So that means you should probably have your last cup of coffee at 9.30 if you intend to go to bed and sleep well at 9.30 p.m. He also says that caffeine affects your REM sleep. And the REM sleep or REM sleep is a deep restorative sleep that has the most powerful effect on us. I know that many people say that they can drink caffeine late at night. They say they drink a, drink a cup of coffee before going to bed. But it's actually the quality and not the quantity of sleep that's affected. So alcohol is also a no-no if you want to have a beautiful deep repose. Matt says that alcohol causes sedation, which actually results in erratic and exhausting brain waves. Alcohol also wakes you up in the night as it triggers fight or flight responses. And I know that I often get woken up during the night when I've drunk the night before. And it also stops your eyes from moving during the restorative REM sleep. Somebody else spoke, oh, actually a few people spoke about keeping to a regular sleep schedule. And this was once again backed up by science. So the sleep doctor wrote an interesting article about why a regular sleep schedule is important for your health. And he cites a study that was done over six years with 2,000 adults. So people who did not go to bed within the same 30-minute period every day saw increases in heart disease, metabolic issues, obesity, stroke, and high blood pressure. So I think it's clear. I mean, the science shows that having a regular bedtime is vital. And one good thing is that it's definitely something that can be done quite easily. So even if you go to bed at 11.30 at night or if you're a night owl, so even if you do it within a 30-minute period, that is considered a regular sleep schedule. So meditation was suggested by my dear friend Diana, uh, who is a certified meditation teacher, and she believes very much in the power of calming your mind before bed. Um, and this was her recommendation, like I said, for sleeping better. And once again, science backs her up. So a lot of people struggle... Or, with insomnia due to stress issues. Uh, so an article on Harvard Health Publishing speaks about the benefits of mindfulness and meditation for your nightly rest. Adults who suffered from insomnia, they were studied once again, or they were the subject of the study, and the results spoke for themselves. So after just six sessions of mindfulness and meditation, they saw a decrease in insomnia, stress, and depression. Dr. Benson, who was the person who conducted the study, taught the participants how to bring on a relaxation response through mindfulness practices and spending 20 minutes a day. That's all they did. That is doable and it's definitely worth it for, for the results that you get or for the quality of sleep that you get. Then my mom also sent me some really interesting articles about biphasic sleep. So apparently the idea of sleeping eight hours a night is actually quite a new one. In the past, people tended to sleep in two sessions rather than in one long block. And I mean, it's quite stressful to think that you have to get eight hours of sleep. So this is something that is really interesting to me because it takes off the pressure of having to have that long and un uninterrupted uh, block of sleep. So this could look like sleeping less at night and napping during the day. And I know napping really helps me. Uh, or you could even break up your night's sleep into two sessions with a break in between. Science doesn't back it up 100% according to a Healthline article, but apparently people have had good results from this type of sleep. But I think at the end of the day, as with anything related to caring for yourself, you need to do what works for you. And it needs to be sustainable and it needs to be manageable. It could take time, some thinking out of the box, a growth mindset and tweaking to find the sweet spot. But whatever you do, I think you should try and prioritize sleep, which is what I am doing, which is why I'm doing this episode, um, because it is one of the most powerful and effective ways to look after yourself. And as a working homeschool mom, you are the most important person in your life. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Drop me a DM on Instagram or post on the Working Homeschool Mom support group over on Facebook and let me know what resonated the most with you. It would also be great if you could rate, review and subscribe or share the podcast with a Working Homeschool Mom who might need it. It's my mission to support as many Working Homeschool Moms as possible. Until next time, take care.
Hello and welcome to the Strike a Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. This is Charlotte Jones. I'm a homeschool coach and homeschooling mom of twin boys. I know it can feel really overwhelming to keep all the balls in the air all the time. So each week I chat about tips and strategies for being a happy and thriving working homeschool mom that you can implement in your life too. I also speak to awesome and inspiring 